we as humans are of course increasing the CO2 levels in the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels and this has an effect on plants because they use the CO2 in the atmosphere for photosynthesis and for their growth but as a consequence they transpire water th to the atmosphere so the title of my research is rising CO2 no sweat the adaptation of plants to rising CO2 concentrations the time scale at which plants adapt is not the same time scale as what as humans we can observe easily. I mean trees they get a hundred years old. If you research something that takes decades or longer you're not gonna wait for that. You're not gonna wait 10-20 years until your research is done so you need to come up with a smart way of doing that research and that's what we try to do. So we try to study plants in the way they might have been growing 50 years, 100 years ago. If you look at a plant you might think it's quite static. I mean, you look at a tree in a forest and it's there, it's just standing there and it seems to be, well, what it is. But actually, your plants have quite an interesting daily cycle. So in the morning, when the sun comes up, they have little pores in their leaves, they're called stomata, and they open and they allow plants to take up CO2 from the atmosphere. Also, at the same time, they start transpiring water and their metabolism starts to create sugars with the use of, of sunlight. Well, at night when the sun goes down, they cannot do photosynthesis anymore, so they close their stomata, but they still continue to burn their sugars because their metabolism still uh, continues. So the next morning when the sun comes up, they open their stomata again, and this is a cycle that occurs every day. So plants link the water and the carbon cycle through transpiration and photosynthesis. And this effect is what we want to study. We want to know how the transpiration of plants changes with rising CO2 concentrations. Depending on how much water is available, the temperature, uh, how much stress the plant feels, changes in the stomatal opening occur. So when the plant is drying out, for example, when it gets really hot or when, when the soil water is, is running out, they can close their stomata again. And what you can see here is the pore. So that is the actual hole in the leaf. And around the hole, there are two cells, and they're called the guard cells. And these are the cells that can open and close the pore during the course of the day. So if we put a plant that has been growing under ambient CO2 concentrations in the phytotron at a different CO2 level, the original leaves, they are what they are. But then when they start growing new leaves under the new conditions, you already see this adaptation in their leaves. And you see that plants decrease the number of stomata when the CO2 in the atmosphere goes up. And that is because it becomes easier for them to take up the carbon from the atmosphere because the concentration in the atmosphere is higher. That on the other hand, they can prevent excess water loss. So they transpire less when the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere goes up. The phytotron we have, there are basically three growth chambers that are exactly the same except for the CO2 concentration. So we have one room in which the CO2 concentration is equal to the ambient concentration, which is around 400 parts per million. Then we have one room with a low CO2 concentration that is around 200 parts per million, and that resembles the CO2 concentration 20,000 years ago. And that was, in the recent history, the period with the lowest CO2 concentration. And then we have a high CO2 level, which is 800 parts per million, and it is roughly equal to what is expected to occur at the end of this century. The step that I want to take is I want to try to model these adaptations that occur at longer time scales, so the decadal adaptation of plants to rising CO2 concentrations in terms of how their stomatal densities, the sizes of their stomata, how they change, and actually couple that to their daily fluctuations when they open their stomata in the morning when they close them at night. On an area basis, they have less stomata and maybe they transpire less, but actually their leaves, they become bigger and they actually have more leaves with a bigger area. So in turn, at a plant level, they may be transpiring as much water or even more water than the smaller plants under low CO2. So how these effects are interacting and what is the net effect of the adaptation at a small scale and a larger scale that is uh, not really understood yet. 
a lot of research has been focused on either understanding how plants adapt at longer time scales, evolutionary time scales, but these researches do not typically focus on what is going on in plants at a daily basis. On the other hand, there are researchers focusing on how plants function in the present, but they forget that plants are also plastic in a way that they can adapt to long-term changes in the environment. So these fields of knowledge, they are somewhat separated. So with my research, I really tried to combine long-term adaptation to short-term adaptation and see what we can learn from, well, both types of research.